Dr. Joseph Perrin, author of the book Zen Golf, currently works with four players who made it to the finals of this year's PGA Tour qualifying tournament. Recently, Rich Lerner sat down with Dr. Perrin to discuss his techniques. Thanks very much. The book is Zen Golf, Mastering the Mental Game, and the author is Dr. Joseph Parent. B.J. Singh has used it, likes it, says the lessons in this book make the mental game seem very simple. It calms me down a little bit, you know, before a tournament when you, when you, you know, if you have a bad hole, you know, what do you think of, what do you not, not to think of. It's, it's, uh, it's every, for everybody out there, and I think everybody's going to enjoy it. This is Headline News, Third Watch with Lynn Russell. So Colorado golf enthusiasts are learning they may need more than just practice on links. Roger Wolf, affiliate KUSA, reports. It's a mix of sport, concentration, and meditation. Because your mind runs every swing that you make. You don't forget your swing from one shot to the next. What happens is stuff gets in the way of it. And once you can clear the stuff out, there it is. Parent counsels his students to keep calm, enjoy the game. People say, if only I played better, I'd enjoy it more. It actually works the other way. If you'd enjoy it more, you'd play better. Okay, I'm guilty of this. A lot of my friends are guilty of this. If we do not play up to our expectations, we have a lousy time on the golf course, a terrible day. Right. How, how do we make the experience a little bit more enjoyable and less incumbent upon our score? Well, I think there's a chapter in Zen Golf for you. It's called How to Enjoy a Bad Round of Golf. Uh, we have very high expectations, set high standards for ourselves, and give ourselves a hard time. If you had a friend who hit a bad shot, you'd say, hey, that's okay, shake it off, you'll be fine. But if you hit a bad shot, you give yourself a much, much harder time. So focus on the process and the quality of hitting a good shot and let the results take care of themselves. From News Channel 4 and Today in New York, this is a special presentation, a preview of the U.S. Open, the best of bet page. Tiger Woods has been quoted as saying it's the most difficult par 70 course he has ever seen. But it's not just a game of practicing, practicing, practicing and getting the skills correct. It's also a huge mental game. So what about that mental game? Well, there are some who say you can practice and get all the help you need by doing something called Zen Golf, mastering the mental game. Dr. Joe Parent writes and teaches Zen Golf. He tried helping this poor golfer on hole number 10. If you start on the path at the pace that you want, with the stroke you want, you made the putt. Did you make the putt? Yes. Yes, and the ball went right in the hole. That's great. What situation doesn't come out better for you if you have clarity about what you want to accomplish, if you have commitment to what you're trying to do, and if you have composure and a settled state of mind about it, everything's going to work out better. Someone asked me, uh, they said, excuse me, I, uh, I play once or twice a month and I never get a chance to practice. Do you have any advice for me? I said, yeah, cultivate your sense of humor. <laughs> You'll enjoy the game a lot more. There was a CEO. He wasn't a very good golfer and didn't like to play in company tournaments. And they finally talked him into one. And he stood on the first tee, and lots and lots of people were gathered around. And he made a big swing with his driver and whiffed it completely. <laughs> Shrugged his shoulders a little bit, stood up again, waggled, took a swing, whiffed again. Stood up a third time, topped it, ran just down to the ladies' tee. Turned around to the crowd and said, Whew! Tough course. <laughs> now that's a sense of humor. <laughs> Preparation, action, response to results. If you're in business, 
Don't you need to make a plan that way? How are we going to prepare for our project? How are we going to do it? And what are we going to look for as far as evaluating it, as far as the feedback goes? In order to commit to something, you have to pre-accept the range of results that might happen. If you don't feel like, I can handle however it turns out, you won't really make that commitment. You'll hold something back. I'd like you to just sign your name right across the page there, in that open space. Just sign your name right across there. What did you do? Anybody spell it wrong? <laughs> no, you get it right? Okay. I want you to trace right over that signature. Don't start till I tell you. I want you to be very careful. <laughs> Don't make a mistake. Don't go off the line. <laughs> oh, slow. Watch it. You're going off the, oh, went off the line. Watch what you're doing. <laughs> okay, that's good. Was that second one nice and smooth and flowing? No, no. What did we do when I said, don't make a mistake, be careful? All right. We didn't trust ourselves, did we? We didn't trust our bodies to just take care of it and follow on the line. No, this is a job for a thinking mind. I have to watch what I'm doing and make sure I do it right. I'd rather you focus on what's right about you than what's wrong about you. But if you have to check out the feedback, you need to do it in the absence of emotion. Because here's a really interesting point. Insight will not arise in the midst of emotional upheaval. And when you hit one that you don't like so much, I'd like you to say, Hmm, interesting. <laughs> How unlike me. <laughs> Wonder where that came from. <laughs> and get a little philosophical about it. You see, I'm not too emotional about it. I have one little story that I'd like to share with you that's one of my favorites, and it has to do with response to results. It was a gentleman who went over to Scotland it was his lifelong ambition to play the old course. And he wanted so badly to do well that it was like that signature exercise. He tried so hard. And the harder he tried, the worse it got. And he came in and shot 137. And he was rather dismayed. And he said to the caddy, I feel so bad. You know, I think I'm just going to throw myself in the ocean and drown. And the caddy said, well, sir, you can throw yourself in, but you'll never drown. He said, what do you mean? He said, You'll never keep your head down long enough. <laughs> so thank you very much for your kind attention. I really appreciate it.